Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Saturday, August 2nd, around 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time. A new volcano on the Kamchatka Peninsula that hasn't erupted since 1550 is now erupting thanks to the 8.8 earthquake happening just a few days ago. The name of the volcano is Krasheninikov. Krasheninikov volcano and it began erupting earlier today. Absolutely fantastic. We've got a lot to talk about, and the big story is wildfire smoke. So buckle up and keep calm. It's boom time. Smoke from Canadian wildfires is blanketing parts of the U.S. Here's how to protect yourself. Well, it's a no-brainer. Stay indoors. And if you go outside, they're saying wear an N95 or KN95 mask. You can also improve the air quality indoors with some air filters and always check your local air quality index before you do any strenuous activity in these conditions. A quick look over at the fire and smoke map version 4.2. Who knew? Now you do. Shows thousands of fires up in Canada here and the smoke is dumping down into the Great Lakes and the Northern Plains here. We also got fires burning in Grand Canyon and Utah sending smoke over much of Colorado. And here is the full forecast. Heavy rainfall and severe thunderstorm threats from the plains and the southeast. There we go. A frontal boundary extending from the western high plains to the southeast will focus additional showers and thunderstorms this weekend. Some of these storms may become severe along with frequent lightning and an isolated instance of flash flooding. Meanwhile, dry conditions will continue for the Great Basin where fire weather concerns linger. For the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast, it will be seasonable weather. And we are over live at Tornado HQ. You can see here that is that frontal boundary that we were just talking about. That's not the only severe weather. We've got some severe weather, a special marine warning down here. It looks like in Florida, northern Florida. But we do have 11 severe weather warnings. The three most recent, New Mexico, Wyoming, and Colorado, all severe thunderstorms. 30 minutes ago, we had a tornado watch in Bent, Kiowa, and Prowers in Colorado, but that has since expired. So for all of your severe weather needs, just go over to TornadoHQ.com for the live severe weather wet map and the warnings in real time. And a quick look over at Roy Spencer. He got the temperature data up uh, for the global lower atmosphere, and as confirmed... Yesterday, by a different set of data, the temperature has been dropping for two years. Yes, it's true. We could see the peak here early in 2024, and it has since been dropping ever since. We've now dropped almost a half a degree C, and the climate tards are silent because this doesn't help their model. They say that we go up, up, and away, and temperature, we're all going to burn up. But clearly... There are natural climate variability cycles, which we're looking at right here. And more fear porn here. Unprecedented heat wave hits Northern Europe. Wow. I think for 13 days in July, it was over 30 degrees. That is 86 degrees, and that is not a heat wave. <laughs> so they make everything red and put a picture of the hot sun and fear monger that it was 86 degrees in the summer for two weeks. Holy macaroni. When in actuality, we have rare snow in Australia in a place that it never snows. People have been alive for decades. They've never seen snow. And thousands of people were driving out to look at the global warming goodness. Take a look. Side of the New England highway, cars pulled up to witness a winter spectacle. It's lovely. Yeah, I've never seen anything like this before. Some had driven through the night for this. So we left Brisbane this morning about 3 a.m. I've never seen snow before in my entire life, and uh, it, it really is a surreal experience. Was it worth it? You bet. Two hours over the border, the tiny town of Gyra was blanketed in white. Hard to believe this is northern New South Wales. <laughs> my parents, they come from Colombia, and they are visiting Australia, and it's unusual snow around. 
And he said, let's go there and see the snow for the first time. This couple made the journey from Jimboomba and sealed the special moment with a proposal. I left work yesterday at 5pm and he said pack a bag because we're getting in the car to go see some maybe snow. It started falling early in the morning and kept going through the afternoon. Nearby Armadale picked up at least 15 centimetres. It made the roads icy, hands frosty and cheeks rosy. But no complaints. Well, maybe a few. <laughs> Can you tell me what's happening right now? It's snowing. And what do you think of the snow? It's very cold and, and it's good for making snowmans. Well, it's not snow in Queensland, but for anyone who made it here, this is more than they could have hoped for. It's cool because we get to build snowmans and do snowball fighting and snow angels. Back over the border after we'd all given up hope, snow in the Sunshine State. Flurries fell just outside of Stanthorpe, a natural wonder that's far too fleeting. Oh, beautiful pictures, Laura is defrosted. So we've got record-breaking snow in Australia. Interesting. Seismic update. We've got no quakes of notes amid Ocean Ridge activity here out on... Um, near Portugal, 5.2. Aftershocks continue but are down in the 5 magnitude. That's good news. An interesting quake in the middle of nowhere, 2.7 in central Alaska. And now we've got the erupting volcano, the newly erupting volcano on the Kamchatka Peninsula. So let's get to that. Uh, the volcano in question is Krasininikov volcano. It's erupting as of earlier today. This is a first eruption since 1550, and we have some footage of that. So that's pretty spectacular that we now have a new erupting volcano in the Camp Chocta. This baby has the potential to erupt to VEI-4. So we'll see how things develop. Let's take a quick look at some of the photography coming out from the eruption. Looks like a 25,000 foot blast maybe. I'm sure we will get the data in the volcano update. So here is the volcano in question. Multiple calderas. You can see this is probably the last activity in 1550 forming this little thing. Didn't even register as VEI anything. But if we go back to 750 AD, VEI 3, around 650 of VEI 2, and around 150 BCE, you know, 2,150 years ago, 175 years ago, VEI 4. So this baby has the potential for VEI-4. Uh, actually, we've got three VEI-4s in the last 8,000 years. So that's what's going on here. Hasn't been active in a while, uh, but once it gets active, it stays active for a period of time. So there's multiple eruptions. So this is going to be going on for some time, most of our lives, I'm sure. We now have Kreshininkov, volcano on the Kamchatka, to add to the list of erupting volcanoes. And I'm back, and that's some pretty cool stuff happening across the world. Worldwide volcano news for the day, we've got Dukono to 6,000 feet, Kirishima, 5,000 foot puff there, Raventador to 14,000 feet, Ibu to 7,000, Sangay to 20,000, Liwa Tobi, still ash to 45,000 feet. Take a look at all that ash up in the atmosphere near the stratosphere. That is crazy. A major eruption yesterday at Liwatobi. Kluchiskyoi started erupting after the 8.8, .8, now up to 30,000 feet. We got a lot going on on the Kamchatka. Merapi puffing and passing. There is the eruption at Liwatobi volcano yesterday to f ash to 40,000 feet. Popo to 19,000. Semeru, who knew? Now you do 15,000 foot blast. Liwatobi to 45,000. Sakurajima, 8,000 foot blast there. Kluchiskyo to 25,000. Look at that. So that is the newly erupting volcano north of Kluchiskyo. Will they be on this list? Kirishima, 5,000 foot puff. Raventador, possible volcanic ash. Ibu to 7,000. Sangay to 19,000. There it is. Krasheninikov. Flight level 14,000, so I was a little high. 
So that's what we got from Krechinikov. I'm sure this is a developing eruption, still erupting as we speak. Ibu to 7,000 feet. Liwa to 45,000, still on the list today. Popo, no further emissions. Kluchiskyoi to 18,000. Um, and the Kamchatka is rocking. Semeru, who knew? Now you do. 15,000 foot blast. Kirishima, 9,000 foot puff. Reventador to 15,000 foot wraps up. Quite an extensive list for the day. And that brings us over to space weather news. Nothing is happening. Flaring increased slightly. We've got some developing sunspots that are growing as they turn around the limb. So we really don't have any space weather in our future. All is quiet on the sun. Speaking of space, NASA's Tracer mission has successfully launched to explore Earth's magnetic field and solar wind interactions. Hmm. I wonder why the government is launching this mission. What say you? It has everything to do with the current magnetic excursion we are all living through. But mum's the word. Uh, mum's the word, not the word, in just a few minutes over at Magnetic Reversal News on Rumble, where Lee and I will be doing our second episode of our new science show, Science Without Consensus. On this show, we will discuss the panspermia theory go over all of the peer-reviewed literature, and blow your mind. This is the best hour in science podcasts that I know of. So join us in just a few minutes over at Magnetic Reversal News on Rumble so we can rumble in the jungle. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned. We post every single day. We've been doing it for a decade. So if you don't get the notifications... We will be posting a video every day moving forward. We love each and every one of you. Be safe, and we'll see you in a minute over at Magnetic Reversal News for the panspermia theory. Nee, 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 nee.